finally starting out on YouTube. I'll need a name. A name for my small channel. <sighs> well, I know I'll be animating, but I can't just use animation as my th thing. I can't use it as my name. Hmm. I could do Plant Master. Yeah, I, I could. It's what I normally use to depict myself. But I don't think I want to use that name. I've outgrown it. Wait. That's it! Planimates! A mixture of plant master animates! Planimates! Yes! Now, all I need is a profile picture. And that is what you're here to see! Me making my own profile picture, which you have already seen right attached to this video. I'll explain it with music going on in the background as you waste some of your precious or not so precious minutes. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get started. So, to start off this project, I first needed a reference image of my desk. My clean and proper workspace. Well, um, uh... After cleaning off my desk neatly and orderly and not at all in another messy fashion, I was then able to take this picture. I mean, look at that. My hair's even combed. So, for the background, I decided to choose a dark, night-colored sort of thing to match the normally dark atmosphere of my room and to contrast the bright colors I planned on bringing into my profile picture later. And as you can see in this part, I'm starting to draw the desk and I'm drawing it in a fashion that is not like the reference image because I wanted it to be facing towards me and have the computer screen obscured from the view, which I couldn't make take a picture of because there is a literal wall here. So there are three things I want to showcase on my desk. One being my laptop, which I couldn't do any of this without. I believe it should be on my desk, otherwise there would be no video. My drawing tablet is next, with it off to the side by the computer while I draw on it with a stylus. And lastly, my mic, which is currently allowing you to hear my lovely voice. Moving on to the laptop, which I'm currently working on right now, I want the laptop to be facing away from me. So I want the computer screen to be facing towards the subject character, but I want the back of the computer to be facing towards the audience. I want to make sure that the computer screen looks open so that the character that I'm going to put in later is able to face it. One of my favorite tools of Adobe Illustrator is the pen adjustment tool, which I used a lot on the MacBook screen to make sure the curves are rounded, to make sure that there aren't any sharp edges, and to make it look natural. I also want to make sure that there is actual depth inside of the computer and onto the desk so that it kind of looks like an angled view of the desk and of the subject. 
So I'm actually very picky about my lines, edges, and corners. I don't like to start off corners with a very sharp edge or a very sharp point on the shape. I also like to move the curves around and try to keep only one dot per curve. However, there are exceptions to this rule because not every curve can look good with just one point. Sometimes it needs a second point to help make sure that it stays round and stays consistent. So the computer back looks barren because most computers have their company logo on the back of them. However, because I don't want to put any company on the back of this laptop on my profile picture, I'm going to use my own logo design, which is just going to end up being Sprout. The Sprout logo only being two leaves and a stem and the word Sprout underneath it and green lettering. I had to decrease the stroke size of the pen, but with that it looks pretty good, and then I can type out Sprout. Stick it underneath. And make sure that it's spelled correctly, because I didn't think that it looked correct. So I'm not fully happy with the laptop, so I'm going to move it off of the edge of the desk and put it more center, and I'm going to mess around with the keyboard to try and give that sharp corner a more rounded look like the rest of my laptop, and mess around with some of the laptop's corners a little bit just to make some of those edges disappear. So now I'm going to actually mess around with the keyboard of the laptop. I'm going to make it taller, I'm going to make it wider, and I'm going to make sure that it blends in more with the computer so that it actually looks like it's coming from the computer instead of a different shape on another layer. So I took the top left corner of the keyboard and I brought it inwards towards the laptop to help hide the keyboard and make it seem like it's behind the laptop from the camera perspective. After shrinking down the keyboard, I can look at the laptop and see that it looks a little too closed so I'm going to rotate the back and mess around with the leftmost corners stretching them out and finagling them into the right position <laughs> Yeah, that looks about right to me. After I'm done messing around with the shape of the laptop, I can now move it towards the center of the desk and start on my drawing tablet. To start off my drawing tablet, I first made a rectangle and then took the corners and curved them inwards. I then moved it down towards the desk and rotated it and scaled it around to make sure that it fit inside of the frame. After taking a good look at it, I decided that I needed to add more depth to it and went to stretching it out. <laughs> I had to click on and off of the drawing tablet to make sure I could view the edges and corners of it. I then wanted to mess around with the stroke size and then change it to a red drawing tablet because that is what my tablet looks like in real life. And then I proceeded to mess around with the corner some more before backing out and starting on my microphone. I wanted my microphone to have a silver color with a bold black outline. I took a rectangle and moved in the corners to make a cylinder sort of shape. I rotated it to give it that nice little skew that my microphone normally has. And then I took an ellipse and made a pop filter off of that. Scaled it down and put it behind the microphone and I wanted to make sure that I had more of a boldness like my actual pop filter so I bumped up the stroke size a little bit. 
I then went to the little wire metal thing that my pop filter has, changed it to a stroke, and I started making a small little arch and swirl. I then moved on to the actual microphone stand itself, the black bars that I that hold up the microphone. Holding that down wasn't as hard as it was, but I wanted to make sure that everything was in frame in case uh, problems with exporting. Made sure to attach the two pen tool lines together. I added a small triangle solid inside of my bars to give it to fill it in a little bit so that I could put nuts in later. I then moved on to the bottom of the microphone to make sure that it wasn't hovering above the bars. It was only after I finished the microphone that I realized that my reference image was on the same layer as all the rest of my artwork. So I promptly deleted myself. No, no, hey, wait, no, no, wait, wait, no, no, no. Made a new layer and put the reference image on that layer. After that little escapade was out of the way, I needed to finish up the microphone by adding nuts to the microphone stand. Clicking on the microphone, I was able to get a base color to start darkening the nuts to my liking. Afterwards, I started the first ellipse and realized that the stroke size was on, so I needed to turn that off. After all three nuts were placed, I was finally able to make the character himself. That was until realizing my fatal error that my microphone was not just a simple, plain, solid. That it actually had knobs, a buttons, and the most important part of a microphone, the audio input. So I had to quickly do that by first putting on the knobs on the back, which were just simple ellipses. Putting on the top of the microphone, which I needed to change the color into a sort of dull yellow. Before moving down below it to get the little silver thing that separates the top of the mic from the regular parts of the mic with a simple teal-ish blue silver. After that was done, I was ready to make my character, but first I needed to have a place for him to sit, so I started on working on the chair. The chair was a, going to be a simple pink ellipse, but it needed to be adjusted so that there was more depth to it like everything else on the desk, so I made it my own with the pen tool and deleted some corners to give it the regular edge look. After a while, I added some detail to my chair, even though it's not the detail of my actual chair, because that is one, two, many different lines on the chair, and I wasn't going to make all of those. After finishing with the detail of the chair, I was able to move on to the bars of the chair that hold the back of the chair to the actual seat of the chair. The bars were just simple four line strokes of the pen tool, putting them back onto the chair layer, bumping up the stroke size on the detail, moving the entire chair around, lengthening the bars again, and making sure that the bars are behind the back of the chair. We have made everything. The desk, the laptop, the drawing tablet, the microphone, the chair. And all I have to do now is put myself at my desk working on an animation. <laughs> so the character that I am using is myself as a sunflower. I'm going to start off with a brown circle, and then I'll mold petals around the brown circle. There will be six petals, each made during the same time with a yellow pen tool with a yellow fill and placed behind the brown circle. So I'm going to explain why I'm drawing myself as a flower. First of all, it's what I know how to draw, and it's what I normally present myself before I became a YouTuber, and, you know... And second of all, humans are very awkward to draw. I mean, look at this guy. He's ugly. Hey!
After closing up the pin strokes with the pedals, I now move with the pin modifier tool to help modify the pedals into my own liking. There's not much to say about the pedals other than I just have to make them look right to me. This was probably the most time-consuming part. I moved on to the stem where I just placed it on a different layer, got a green color, used the pen tool to create a little arch. Collected the entire head, pedals and all, and tilted it off to the side a little bit before continuing to mess around with the pedals. I wanted the eyes to be a nice magenta color as it was the color of my hair and I wanted some semblance between me and the character on the screen. After figuring out what exact color my eyes should be, I made another one and centered them directly on the head. I was then able to move on to my arm, and after drawing it out, I realized that it was not on the layer that I made it for. So I controlled X, controlled V, and used the modifier tool to help give it the correct curve and bend. After deciding which modifiers go where on my arm, I made my other arm and made it cut off at the laptop to prevent myself from drawing more than I needed to. Then I changed the layer that it was on and lengthened it out to make sure that it hid behind the laptop well. I moved on to the pupils of my eyes, which would be a darker color version of my eyes without a stroke on. Skewing the pupil slightly and then copy pasting it into the other eye, I was now ready to move on to my glasses, which took a long time to figure out how I wanted to create them. I tried many concepts for my glasses, such as an open top rimmed glasses, square glasses, and I tried many different colors as well. I settled on a teal color to contrast the rest of my face with circle frames. The second to last thing that I added was a smile, which was a black curve with the pen tool. Last thing I needed was a stylist, which I chose a orange pencil styled stylist instead of the black one that I have, because it would stand out against a drawing tablet. And there you go. 
my profile picture, which you may or may not even need to see being created. But it is the first thing I'll make for this channel. And it will not be the last. Before you go, I want to give a huge thanks to you guys, the viewers, for watching this video. Starting out with someone new might frustrate you, but I hope to grow and mature my style of content. Thank you to the music producers who allow me to use their music in my videos without worry of copyright violations. You help make this video more entertaining for me to make and others to watch. If you want to support me more, you can always subscribe and like the video. This brings more attention to me and allows this work to be made more public. Thank you so much for watching, and please, have a good rest of your day.